Hello and welcome to the channel. Now, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at this. So this is a grip for your Nintendo Switch with integrated Joy-Cons. Now, we've looked at one before and you may have well seen one on Amazon floating about. Well, this is a bit different for a few reasons, all of which we'll go into in the video. So if you are after some pretty decent Joy-Con alternatives, which are both comfy, work surprisingly well and make the Switch look suspiciously like a Steam Deck with just a hint of colour, then watch on. So join me as we turn up the lights, put this down onto the tech desk and go through this, the full size controller for the Nintendo Switch. Welcome down onto the tech desk. And as we said in the introduction, we're going to be looking at this today. So this is a, what they've called a full-size controller for NS Nintendo Switch. And there's a picture of it on there. So I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks and I've repackaged it up just to show you what you get if you go and order it. I've link, leave links down below of where you can get hold of this particular model because this one is a little bit different to maybe the ones that you've seen on Amazon. Uh, we'll talk about the, the differences between this and the other ones as well. So here you go, full size controller for NSWitch, turbo function, double shock, uh, six axis gyro. Uh, it doesn't contain a switch, unfortunately. Uh, sorry about that. Full size controller, a little bit more about it there. So we've got the kind of like the usual functions of it. Um, there, that's it really. Uh, it's quite a nice cardboard box actually. So you take that out and then you've got, thank you for choosing our product, lovely. And there it is there and it, you get a little card that says about the kind of like a warranty sort of thing fantastic and this this is just isn't just a um an instruction manual uh, look it's an instruction poster look at that that's fantastic absolutely brilliant sometimes you get these tiny control manuals and it's really difficult to read especially with all the language and stuff no bang bang have that really really nice really nice to see that so when i was playing with it i just had this laid on the desk and i was following the instructions absolutely perfectly so there we go there's the instructions for it love it And then here it is, so when you take it out, another nice little touch, it has these kind of foamy rings on here to help prevent when it's in transit so the uh, thumbsticks don't move. So that's a nice little touch. And then here it is. So first impressions, it's really smart. This really caught my eye on the website. I think it looks dead smart with the blue and the red on there. And initially the first impressions are it's um, symmetrical thumbsticks. The big difference with this one and one of the other ones you might have seen of this is these are symmetrical. So the other ones are asymmetrical, so it's symmetrical. So it's the thumbsticks are right at the top there and the button the D pad are down there. Now I thought it was going to take me a bit of a time to get used to that. It doesn't at all. It's really quite natural to be able to go from the thumbsticks down to the buttons and the D pad down there. I didn't have an issue at all. I was a little bit concerned about it. No, if you are, don't worry about it. Okay, so going over then we'll start on this side of kind of work over. So on here, so this blue bit here, this is completely plastic it's plastic all over okay so this is this separate blue bit it's got this kind of grippy texture to it for when you're gripping it which is really nice your d-pad here which is in, in four parts uh, your thumbstick massive great big thumbstick there if I compare it to a an official joy-con look at that it's a good few millimeters bigger it's really really nice and then here you have three buttons, you have turbo, you have your minus and your screenshot and that LED, that's an LED in there, that just tells you whether you've got the turbo on, okay? So this, is a, this side is a manual turbo, which means when you're hitting turbo, you have to hold down the button of whichever one you want for it to activate. And then up here we have an L and an L2 and the good thing about the L2 is you can either press it there or there. It's a, it's, I, I, I guess it's an intended feature. But look, so you can have like a trigger. So it's going to be digitized with all switches. So there or there. That registers both of them. That's really, really nice. I, th I found that really good to be honest. I thought it was really, really nice. Uh, all plastic here. Um, and then I'll talk about that in a second. And over here, exactly the same. So we've got an auto turbo here, which means you don't need to press anything, it'll turbo for you. And that LED there will tell you whether it's on or off. Uh, a plus and the home button, nice big X, Y, A and B. And then again, another big thumbstick. And again, the R and the R2. Again, you can either press the trigger there or there. Whether that's intended or not, I don't know, but that's really nice. It feels really good to be able to do that. 
and then here on the other side this is red and it, again it's got that grippy texture for when you're holding it and then down the bottom guess what that is yeah charging port so stick your cable in there and it will charge your switch this doesn't have a battery so if you've got your switch in it it will not charge your switch okay you do have to have it plugged in there so this is basically just a pair of joy cons okay so let's get the switch I've got my switch here um, and the basic the way you do it in is as with you'd expect you just slide it in now before you do that I just want to notice there is no rubber at all it is all plastic there is no kind of protective rubber anywhere to be seen on this you'd think that would be rubber it's not it's just another bit of plastic having said that when I've been putting it in I've been putting it in this in and out of my um, switch dozens of times over the past couple of weeks like loads and it hasn't marked it as yet there was a bit of marking you just rub it off it hasn't marked it at all yet so just bear that in mind it might do because it is plastic on plastic but mine hasn't over the time and then it's really easy you don't have to do anything you just line it up line it up and slot it in and when it's in it's in quite nicely it is going to take a bit of force to push it out so it is in there quite tightly so there's no way of it going to fling out if you're going to be throwing it around and you hurl it obviously on the top you have access obviously to every single function on the top there and on the back there it has access access for the vents and on the bottom you're obviously not going to have anything for your kickstand um, and so your memory card in there and as well it will not stand up as well so there's nothing it would have been nice if there had been a kickstand in there for it to do a bit of desktop time but there isn't unfortunately so it can't stand up feels really good in the hand it isn't too heavy so this is 270 this is 300 so combined it's 570 grams so it's corner almost doubling the weight of this but that's not a problem it feels really comfy okay so if I flip this over with my average adult sized hands and my kids have been playing this as well it's a really nice fit it makes it feel comfy if you've got like the split pad pros or any other larger of the joy cons that we've looked at um, it fits really nicely in hand it's really comfortable um, there's one thing I did want to notice actually of who it's made by it doesn't have a brand name at all anywhere unless the only way I got to see it was on here and it says here right in the corner that if you want to upgrade it you can do you go onto the website of bebocool.com so bebocool b-e-b-o-c-o-o-l.com I guess that's who make it I don't know it doesn't say anywhere on it of who it's made by but I guess it's made by them because as you can see it's completely kind of branded and all it says is made in China and that's pretty much it the way to pair it okay so you have to press that button okay it won't wake up the switch okay that's the one thing but I'm honest with you that doesn't matter because if you're gonna use this you need to use it with the switch and you don't need to wake it up because instead of pressing that button you just press that button there you go so that's not an issue at all and I had unpaired it so all I would do there we go so it's already paired it so I'd unpaired it to another um, controller and I'd unpaired this all you do is slide it on and it will recognize you dead easy straight away Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our usual functions. We go down to system settings and then we go all the way down to controllers and sensors. And we do control sticks and we're going to look at this left one. Okay, I wouldn't have expected there to be drift after a couple of weeks, but that's not saying there won't ever be drift on this thing, but at the, car, at the moment there isn't. But I wanted to show you things like dead zones. So someone said you wanted me to do it slowly out left to right. So if I do slowly out that way, slowly out that way. Slowly out that way, then slowly out that way. I'm doing it as slow as I can. Okay, and then all the way around. Okay, and then look at the, the right stick. If I do it as slowly as I can. Okay, great. When I've been playing it, I found them to be fantastic. In fact, the um, the stick actually, you, you're pushing it kind of really good for first person. If you're pushing it kind of, if I show you here, so there we go, we've got to the edge there. Look at my right thumb. You've still got a little bit of extra to go. Okay, so it's really quite sensitive. I found these, these thumbsticks to be great. Um, and the buttons as well, so let's quickly
no lag. No lag. Uh, press turbo and B. And then we need to hold down B. And you can actually increase the turbo for 5, 10 to 20 seconds. Um, oh, that's on the manual turbo, which means if I hold it, I've got to hold it down, it won't do anything. If I did the auto turbo, that would mean it would be pressing the B without me touching it. So a couple of nice features. Um, it just has that. And then when you want to turn turbo off, you just hold down turbo and press that button again, and the turbo has, has finished. Let's quickly whip into a game of Mario. And there was something I wanted to show you here. If I kind of like, so there we go, so, so I can press that top bit for the trigger, or that bottom bit there. So of course that's really, really nice. Um, the rumble on this is brilliant. It's really, it, I'll go on the rumble here, so I can show you the gyro while we're here. But the rumble, it just feels like the whole thing is rumbling. It's a really deep rumble. It's fantastic. It just feels great. It feels like a really, really good rumble on this thing. It says it's got a rumble piece, a rumble piece and a rumble piece in there, but it just makes the whole thing rumble. It doesn't feel like it's coming from anywhere. It's a really, really, really good, really good thing. Okay, so as we said, gyroscope there. Yeah, great. Fantastic, rumble, fantastic. Nice and sensitive, there's no lag. No lag from where I've, I've experienced at all. So really good, really good playing with games. Really enjoyed it. Um, I did want to talk about the D-pad. I will talk about the D-pad uh, very briefly because I know it's on a, a personal preference. The D-pad is a bit mushy, if I'm honest. If you kind of press it, it doesn't register. You have to kind of press it down a little bit and that will annoy some people. It didn't annoy me and I didn't have a problem using it, but kind of you do have to make a, a definite press for it to work because if you press that, can you see this one moving here? So it's a bit mushy. So just something to keep in mind, but for me, Honest with you, I didn't. I didn't have a problem with it. I never thought. Oh no, I've missed something just because I was doing it with the D-pad there. Okay, so one other thing as well. Final bit of protection. You're going to get protection all the way around, and you're not going to get much protection on the top because the lip of it doesn't quite go over the top of the switch. The switch is higher than this, but then you're going to get some protection all the way around here and all the way around here. Okay, so but that's not really the main reason. The main reason you're going to buy this is one, because probably because it looks quite cool, and two for for the comfort as well. And because you can't take these off, and because they're a lot bigger than regular Joy Cons a lot bigger than regular Joy-Cons, you're gonna need a case for them to go in. There are specific cases that work with the Split Pad Pro and stuff, but this is a little bit of a different shape. And I've gone through all of my cases, and the only one I've found to work is this one, the Satisfy Grip case. So if I pop this open, and I take my Satisfy Grip out, the only way I fit that is popping it in there, like that. There we go. It's not the best fit, if I'm perfectly honest, but it does fit with a bit of squeeze, okay? That's the only one, the case I've found to be able to work. Every, every other case, my Mumba, my Skull & Co's, too small, unfortunately, for this case. So if you did want something, look up for a specific, maybe for a Split Pad Pro, the case, I haven't got that one. Otherwise, this one, the Satisfy Grip case. Okay, so overall then, a really nice controller. Very cheap, if you go and have a look down the links below for the price. But this was my look then for the alternative switch controller for the switch. There we have it then, that was my look at this, this full-size controller with integrated Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. I think it looks a, bit, a little bit different to the normal ones that you may have seen on Amazon. I think it makes it look pretty smart, especially with the colours. Makes it look a bit like a Steam Deck, doesn't it? Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Okay, so let me know down in the comments below what you think of this. Go and have a look in the links below where you can go and get hold of this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.